Welcome to the Artist Check-In. I'm your host, Nick Zeno. My day job is talking to artists for different publications, which means I know a lot of people whose livelihoods have been impacted by the quarantine associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. In this limited series, I'll be talking with comedians, musicians, sound engineers, authors, and creative people about how they're handling this personally and professionally. This week, I speak with comedian, actor, and now kids show host, Corey Rodriguez. Corey was working on cruise ships as late as mid-March, just as the full weight of the pandemic was coming to bear, and he tells us what that was like. Like most every comedian, Corey lost his bookings for the year, which gave him the excuse to start Corey's Stories, the show he now hosts every weekday at 7.30 p.m. reading to kids. And if you're listening on May 21st, the day this comes out, go to NowhereComedyClub.com to see him on the Best of Boston stand-up with Kelly McFarlane, Dan Crone, and Laura Severs. Here's Corey. I know you as a stand-up comedian. What else would you add to that description of, of you as a professional or as a uh, just as a human being? A stand-up actor, um, you know, kids' TV host. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> well, you were one of the first people that I was kind of worried about when this started because as the news hit that everybody was supposed to start locking down. The first image I see of you on Facebook is you walking off a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's not, I, I really hope Corey's okay. You were on the cruise ships until very late into this, somewhere mid-March, right? Yeah, yeah, I was on that mid-March, but still it wasn't, um, it wasn't like it is here. Everyone there was like, everyone's blown it out of proportion here. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it hadn't reached the levels of uh, craziness that it has reached now or that it had reached then. Like by mm. that time I was on the ship, I literally was sitting in Mexico eat. I had like some, I had a, <laughs> I had a, a Michelada, Michel. <laughs> Michelada, I believe it's called, right? So it's like all like it's like a Bloody Mary inside of a beer. And I was sitting there having one of those. I was like, oh, I'll try that. It was all spicy. It was delicious. And I'm hanging with these guys from one guy from South Africa, one guy from uh he was from uh Ireland, another guy from I think he was from England. So they were they were performers on the ship, and then myself. Uh, and then the magician, the comedian magician. So we're all hanging out, man. And then some of the, one of the girls who was a performer there, like one of the singers. We're in this place, $10 massages. And we were all just talking about all the stuff going on. Like all of our friends were messaging back and forth. Like, it's crazy. But we were like, is it really crazy? <laughs> it's like palm <laughs> trees over there. And everyone's chilling. The lady was coming up like massages. I was like, $10, $10 for one hour. We're like, wow. I was like, this is paradise. And... Uh, <laughs> I just didn't think it was, uh, I mean, some of my friends are like at home were like, Hey man, it's serious. You know, it's getting serious. Like they're locking down places here. They're locking down places there. You know, they're, they're putting a state of emergency in place here. They're thinking about putting a state of emergency in place in Massachusetts. They hadn't done it yet. And so other people were calling home. Another guy was from Italy and he was like, Oh man. He's like, I call home. He's like, some people saying it's bad over there. It's not that bad. And then, Later he was like, it's bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it was, it was, um, it was like a lot of this, you know, uh, on the ship. No, 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 but you know, not, not nothing to do with the waves. It was just like, um, a lot Ups of people were going different ways with it. So, so you were lost out there. Like the people on the, sh even the people having a good time on the ship, like the guests and stuff were just like, ah, like, what's it going to be? I mean, this the government blowing it out of proportion. It's really not that bad. And we were in, like, a La La Land. So we were probably one of the last ships that were in La La Land before things, like, really went crazy. Um, well, some of the first news was about the outbreaks on cruise ships. Did you get any of that news? Or were they saying, hey, we'll, we'll watch something else. No news for the next couple of weeks. We Our news feed's not... Yeah. I, oh, I don't know what's going on with our news feed. Uh, <laughs> we, we were getting, we were getting that news. I definitely was getting that news, but it wasn't a surprise to me, only because, um, I mean, the cruise ships. If you're, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Let me, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. I do all these jokes about 
washing your hands and 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 just hygiene and all this other stuff. Yes. I do all these jokes about it. I'm already like that, you know. So like when I'm on the ship, you know, yeah, people are gross because there's mad, there's a mass amount of people going to a buffet or touching things or in a gym or whatever. Just yeah, that's what it is. So I'm extra cautious about doing all those things. So I, I'm not, I wasn't like, oh no. You know, like, like, yeah, did I not want to be trapped in an elevator with somebody? Of course. So I just used the stairs more. So I was never, like, right on top of anybody. And that's mm -hmm. in general. Um, now, the word, word was coming in. I was talking to friends and stuff, and they were saying what was going on. And even Orlando Baxter was on the ships at the time. He was on later than me. Orlando was mm -hmm. on much later. Orlando was on the ship so long that he couldn't get off. Uh, at some the, Certain ports wouldn't even let them stop. So they couldn't get off. Um, one port did that to us, but but Orlando was on so long they wouldn't let him like dock in Florida for a while. Like he had to just That's go another be, couple of days when he was supposed to get off. It was nuts. That's got to so, be terrifying to some extent, if, especially if Florida won't take you. Yeah, right. Considering what's already in Florida, they're like, no, right. full up, <laughs> you can't stop here. <laughs> Yeah, so it it was it was uh it was a little it was a little crazy, but it I don't want to over exaggerate it and make it seem like I felt this immense pressure and fear. I didn't mm -hmm. because there was such a pull from the other side of like ah oh, we don't know what this is gonna be, and we didn't know really mm -hmm. at the time. You know, nobody really knew. You know, until people really were like you know oh it's China it's China oh some people over here oh it's gonna it could be bad, but you know. Triple E's real bad, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I'm just saying like all the scary things that happen. And then it's like, are you going to, so then, so then we were on the ship thinking, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to be sad and solemn the rest of these days here? And like, right. we got it. We got it. We're here. So, so it was a happy hour. You know what I mean? It was just like, what are you supposed to do? You know, yeah, the terrifying news that you can't do anything to change necessarily. I guess everybody could stay in their rooms like some people did when things got really bad a couple of weeks after that, and everybody was quarantined in their rooms. On but some ships, they were, yeah, they were, they were, they were, they were. Even I had some friends that were, they were quarantined, and some of the quarantines were, were strict and some were loose. Some were like, be in your rooms, you're supposed to be in your rooms, but you know, you got your friend across the hall and whatever. So you're not really doing it. Some were very strict. Like mm -hmm. we see you on camera doing, it's going to be some consequences. So, you know, make sure you are adhering to that. People will deliver your food to your room. You need to stay in those quarters. So when you got off the ship and it's only a week or two weeks later, that things started to get really serious at that yeah. point, are you thinking, maybe I have this, maybe, you know, it, it was, was it on the ship I was on or did I just dodge a huge bullet getting off the ship when I did? I wasn't thinking about it like that. I was kind of thinking like, I was thinking, well, I was thinking, did I already get it? Do I already have it? Had I already had it? Did I have it two months ago before it was like a pandemic mm -hmm. or epidemic, whichever one is the right word there. Did I have it then? Have I been sick already and just, was one of the people who went through it. And I'm sure there's plenty of people who had it mm -hmm. and they went through it before everyone was getting tested for it or whatever. Cause once they test it, they're like, you have it, you're contagious. Now <laughs> pat on the butt, go home and, and get better. Right. Or stay here and get better. If it doesn't get terrible. Um, pat on the butt with the giant plastic hand at the end of the six foot <laughs> right, right, yeah. stick that I have go home. Because, <laughs> well, that that's not, that's disconcerting when your doctor, handles you with one of those with some of those joke hands on the end of yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. That... <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so so i don't know I, I so i wasn't super stressed i i just i was like you know what i don't i feel fine with it they say people dying and saying it's older people i just i just felt i felt okay i was like i'm gonna ride it out and see i said i feel good so we'll just see and everything it was fine I'm sure maybe somebody had it on that. I mean, I don't know, but they have it everywhere. But people get so weirded out about the cruise ship because you're confined. Yeah. But it's like you still can be clean within the space. It's just, mm -hmm. it's extra care, you know, the same way you're at your job. If you're at your job all day around those people and you're working in an environment, you know, like you have a great opportunity to make mistakes of not washing your hands and touching your face and, rubbing your eyes and doing all these things that you may do to 
help pass the disease along. So, or the right. virus well, along. Sorry, not the disease. When they started talking about not touching your face, your bit uh, about a friend of yours rubbing his eyes and then gra- what was it grabbing the, the chicken? Was it the, grabbing the pretzels? He's just the pretzels. Reaching, grabbing the pretzels and the nachos. I'm like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like that came to mind immediately. Yeah, yeah. It's popped into my head more than once with, with the, the not touching your face. Right, right, right. Digging in an orifice. I mean, sometimes <laughs> I think people just do it. Depends on how comfortable they are with you. They just do it. And sometimes they don't even know. There's so many times people will be talking to you and they'll be like, <laughs> and, and what I was going to do. And that, now they just coughed in that hand and now they're ready to touch whatever's coming. They don't leave the conversation to go. Like someone can be like <clears throat> a few times and then the food comes out and they're like, Ooh, I've been waiting for this calamari. And you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, just, you coughed all in that hand, man. What's up? Like, you, gotta, you know? So. There's been plenty of times that I'm like, nah, nah, I don't want that. I'm going to get something else. I, I just, I'm not in the mood for calamari right now. Yeah, but I've said it before. I never knew how much I touched my face yeah. on a day-to-day basis before the, this happened. Like, yeah. And sitting in line waiting to get into Market Basket, and you, I've got the mask on, and everybody's six feet away. All of a sudden, my eyes start to tear up a little bit. I'm like, I, I can't. I can't. There are people <laughs> yeah. watching. <laughs> I, I can't do it. They won't let me in. It's this, <laughs> this weird, like, like mild dystopian fiction of I, I can't touch my eye. But now I really, really want to touch my eye. But yeah, yeah. The, the I've, next... I've... Oh, go uh-huh. ahead. Sorry. No, I, I've been taking a lot of wrists to the face. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, you, you hope your wrist doesn't touch as much stuff. And then I think like, oh, what about my sleeve? And so I don't know. At a certain point, I'm like, something's got to give. My eye is itchy. So like, I'm not going <laughs> to scratch it on some other surface. I, I'm using <laughs> something to scratch it or pat it or something. Probably worse if you drag it along the side of the building was, you know, there you go. There you go. <laughs> before you go in. That would probably also weird people out a, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. If I found a corner and just rub my eye in that corner, it would probably be a problem. It's that is, sharp that's... edge. Like a, a deleted scene from Blair Witch, you're over there in the corner just rubbing your face. What's going on with that guy rubbing his face in the <laughs> in the corner? So, so this must have been the other part of this is there's the health worry and there's the economic worry. How big a part of your spring and summer uh, or your your yearly income uh, would the cruise ship work have been? Uh, drastic. Drastic, drastic, drastic. I mean, I'm very, 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 very busy uh, March and, and rolling into April and then into um, March, April. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One second. March, April going into. <laughs> Panic inducing. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody sneeze now. I know, right? It's like I'm in, my, in the confines of my home. Everybody's safe. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had a very, very, very busy gear set up. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was huge, huge. <clears throat> um, this isn't Corona. This is allergies, uh, by the way. So sure. Uh, allergies are killing me right now. But, uh, yeah, so, so I had a, I had a great year set up and that is all that's, it's unrecoupable. Mm-hmm. If that's, if that's a word, it, uh, it cannot be cooped, uh, <laughs> because, uh, uh-huh. there's many other comedians that have to fill slots and there's just not enough time in the year to make all those things up because it's not like oh okay well you don't have anything on the books now and this date or this one but i would i would i mean Mm. i don't go i can't tell you the last time uh uh unwillingly that i had more than a weekend off in a month Mm. like I, i have to take it off you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I have to schedule off. I'll be like, all right, I'll schedule off. This is from family vacations. I'll schedule this week. I'll schedule that week. If I don't do that though, I'm working almost every weekend, almost <laughs> every weekend. I could be working, but I'll, you know, I obviously take them off. So, so it's not to say that like, Oh, well that money that got messed up early in the year, you could do it later in the year. It's like, well, not really, because then I'm knocking out other work that I would be doing. So right. it doesn't balance up. So it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's not great. It's not are, great, but everybody's going through it. So I'm not, I'm not crying about it. You know, 
we're starting some places are starting to sort of reopen different places and, and live venues will be amongst the last to be reopened but are any clubs reaching out to you now saying i don't know september october later in the fall do you want to come back or is that where you're looking to possibly start again I, they, i'm supposed to be at uh i'm supposed to be at Mohegan Sun in June. That date's been rescheduled four times because they were going to open Connecticut back up. So mm -hmm. it was, it was going to be March a couple times. It's going to be April, May, and now it's into June right now uh, for Mohegan Sun. So um, we'll see if that happens. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, other clubs have reached out. Just I'm doing like Zoom shows, and other cl some clubs have kept their dates. But I mean. I had dates until December, you know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. some people have canceled, you know, September. Some people have canceled September dates at this point, you know, well, so. When would you feel safe going back, uh, especially as someone who is very hygiene conscious? Yeah. I mean, am I, I think, overblowing that because of the bit or is you, you are? No, 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 I, I am very much. I, I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think how to word this. I think... There's gonna to have to be some manipulation of uh, some manipulation going on, or some sort of. Um, there's gonna to have to be some manipulation going on. There's gonna to have to be something to trick us to make us think that it's cool. Like, like here's what I'm saying. They're gonna to have to really because they need people to work. They need people to work. So this is just everybody, not just us as performers. So this right. is all answering your question. When will I be comfortable to come back? When when they come out and say something like. You know, guys, most of you already had it. Most of you are going to get it. If you haven't had symptoms, it doesn't mean that you haven't already had it. It's not killing most people. Uh, we see what the numbers are. When we do these, these some of these late projections, really, it's the people with underlying conditions. So if you're living your life, you need to go back out and live regular and not live under a rock. This is not going to kill most people. People who do have conditions and have things going on, yes, you have to be more at risk, but make sure that you're not putting yourselves in those type of situations till we get a better handle on it. Mm -hmm. You need to live your life, go out and live your life and don't, don't, uh, don't let this stop us. You know what I mean? Whatever. The same kind of stuff we say after a marathon bombing, you know what I mean? Like, well, mm -hmm. this is our city. We're going to do what we got to do with Boston. Right. If they come out and start saying stuff like that and then people's minds start changing, then it's going to, it's going to be fine. Right. Uh, we think, you know, mm -hmm. unless it's much worse. Um, but are you watching the numbers? Is there something in that, you know, we looking at the, at flattening the curve? Well, we'll see because we're just starting to relax things. We really mm -hmm. have to pay attention to Florida and Atlanta because they were relaxing them just a little bit ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. So if we see their numbers going back up drastically. What are we going to do? Are we going to shut back down again? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be like, well, the numbers are going back up because more people are infected, but there's less people dying. Like, where the, where's going to be the breaking point where they're like, more people are infected, less people are dying because the right people are getting infected and not the wrong people. So our number switch, our number graph has changed mm -hmm. so that it's just like how many people have common cold, right? And, and, and how many of those, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like most people have been through it. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm just the hip here i don't know but if they started saying things like that it would make people get more comfortable because at the end of the day right here's what i think nick at the end of the day if if they decide to uh slowly you know re release everybody back and everybody's getting around everybody again and we did this slowly and everything's happening like mm. that right that's fine that's cute but people are gonna start to mingle up anyways they're gonna do what they're gonna do anyways so it's like is it okay or is it not okay you know so if they could get us there faster because people are gonna get there that, that's gonna be the thing that this all oh, the new normal and all that shit like it's people are gonna be comfortable they're gonna get more comfortable as soon as they do it once or twice you know what i mean as mm -hmm. soon as they have sex without the condom once or twice they're like ah, it's, it's okay you know what i mean they're gonna, <laughs> they're, gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do it and then they're gonna do it again and then they're going to do it again. And they're going to be like, all right, well, I didn't get sick. They didn't get sick. I didn't get sick. They didn't get sick. Okay. What's going to stop people from then continuing? Nothing. They're going to do it, you know? 
Mm. It's right now people are afraid, you know, like there, there's still like a fear out there. I will say that that I am addicted to looking at the free Craigslist ads and the uh, music, the musical instrument section on Craigslist. Yeah. And somewhere in mid April, uh, there's that personal section up in the corner. Like yeah. who's still, who's posting like for hookups <laughs> in mid April in the middle. And it's, there were some people on there that, that are just come like, come over right now. Like, how are you? <laughs> This is not even somebody you know. This is just anybody who wants to answer your ad on Craigslist. How are you? I, I, that's a very special kind of person. Yeah, either that's a very <laughs> stupid killer, right? Or a very, a very special person. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, I mean? like, what is happening? You the know? Craigslist killer yeah. in, in the middle of the pandemic, just sitting in his bare apartment, twiddling his thumbs uh, yeah. on a chair on a bunch of plastic underneath him, going, "Nobody's responding anymore. Yeah, I feel crazy. lonely." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "If anybody does come, they deserve to die. They just, <laughs> they're not going to look for this person. Like, to come here." So, know? what do you think it's going to feel like when you stand on a stage again? in in front of a few hundred people the most annoying thing that i am considering when i go back and get back on stage <laughs> is the not annoying thing but the most perplexing thing that i'm working uh -huh. with is how to address this in a unique way because it's going to be it's going to be covered and covered and recovered and covered and covered and recovered and covered like when trump got elected it's like do you want to touch it? Do you want to even go there? Or are we just going to move on? Like, okay, mm -hmm. it happened. You know, because everyone's going to make jokes about it. So it's like, am I, do I have to talk about the pandemic for 20 minutes, 10 minutes? <laughs> do I have to do a quick five on it? Am I gonna? Am I just saying what the last three guys said? Did right. somebody in another club across town just say exactly what I'm saying? Like, there's going to be a lot of that. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, one, one of the comics I was talking to was funny. It was like, this is going to be, one of those situations where it's the content is hacky if it hits the stage right. because so many zoom shows and it's been used and abused up so much you know so well in the meantime you are doing the zoom shows this is going to come out on the 21st uh in time for for people to to see it before the best yeah. of boston show that, that's happening uh and that's the nowhere comedy club is that where that yeah nowhere comedy club yeah, and people can find that nowherecomedyclub.com, I think is the Yep. And yep, nowherecomedyclub.com. We got that show. That's tomorrow, right? Yep. The 20th, I think. Can't believe it. Wow. Uh and we're coming up on my 14 Yeah, wow. We're coming up on my 14 year anniversary right now, too. Uh cuz I I May 26th will be my uh 14 year anniversary doing stand up. Oh, you got it to the day from the Is that the first open mic that you yeah, did? Yeah, that was the first time I went up. Uh, May 26th, um, May 26th, 06. But uh, it was, um, I, I don't know. I get, we were kind of saying, how would you feel when you go back? I just think that I would, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be okay. Like it, it's cause the mindset, my mindset is gonna be, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm not going back to be timid. If I make the decision at home to go, I'm going to do it, the show. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if I don't make the decision to go, then I'm not going to go. So I'm not the type of person who's going to get there and be like, oh, I don't know. This is a little much for me. Like, the people you, are everywhere. Like, you know, I mean, you like, mean going back to live, to uh, in-person live shows? If that's, that's if, Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're talking about now, though? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about now. When we do go back to that. Mm -hmm. So... so but, you know. In the meantime, have Zoom shows and and online comedy has that made up anything for you in terms of uh, of, of finances? And no, 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 the no, 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 no. They've just they've they've been fun. They've, they're a different uh, muscle to work, and they've been fun to perform and to just kind of do that whole thing. That that's been cool. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that uh, performing and just. Um, just, I don't know, trying something a little different. It's different. That's It's way mm -hmm. different. Um, so, yeah, I would say that, th for that, I like it. Um, live, there's nothing like live performance. So, live performance is, trumps everything. 
But if you have to and you're stuck and you got to do Zooms, then and it's weird, you got to do Zoom. It it is what it is. Like, just try to make the best out of it because it's like, what are you going to, what else can you do? So, making the best out of that situation, it's, it's, um, I've done a few now and it's just, it's, that's what it's going to be. Um, you know, as, as, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. It's just, it's been interesting to watch as a comedy fan to see people try to figure out the beats and the, and the laugh lines. Yeah. And there's a lot of telling the joke and then, uh, um, and then going on to the next thing is it's almost like that exasperation is filling in where the laugh line would have been before that some sort of, Hey, uh, some sort of fumfering or stammering. And then they go on to the next joke because they need some, they need that little space between right. the jokes. So you're finding it, you're finding yourself and then you're trying to find the what are you going to do? Is the is show better to have the people inside the Zoom with you so you're looking at all these people unmuted and so you can hear the laughter and then you have to hope that your volume stays higher than what their volume is so it doesn't drown it out. That's one. Two is, yeah. do you have their volume off so then it's just quiet and you see just heads just laughing but you don't hear anything and then you go along with it that way, you know, or you don't have anybody in the room and it's almost like you're on an audition and you're just talking to a maybe one person who's broadcasting the, the zoom or something. And, uh, when you're doing it that way, I mean, it is, yeah, you could get that weird, like, uh, um, after, but it's like the more, I feel like, uh, the more you do it, I, I feel like the more you do it, the more you, I don't know, the more you do it, the more you get comfortable with that weird part after. And so you mm-hmm. just roll, you understand that like, okay, you know what? Someone is there watching it. Someone is seeing this. So I need to just roll with it and, and, and go. It's, we, it's weird, but you got, it's like a, it's like a different muscle. We're not used to that muscle and everybody's mm-hmm. having to use it now. And so okay. for that part, it, it's, it's a little strange, but it's, it's workable. Um, I have seen at least one person in a, in an Instagram interview, try to, to, hide the fact that he was going to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and the host sort of heard it and called him on it. Are you, are you on the toilet right now? Are you seriously talking to me live on Instagram on, on the toilet? I'm not sure if, if that's, I think that that's uh, probably was in their stories and gone now from, so I won't mention who it was. I would hope it, so. It, it tried to get, but it's also a weird landscape now. Like I saw, uh, I was just about to to watch a movie and, and I checked Instagram and there's uh, Michael Shea and Sam J talking at two in the morning, and that w- and it's just them talking for uh, an hour and a half as like we're listening in on a, a phone call. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Sam J, what do you say? Hung up. What's the what's Instagram for hung up? Uh, and then he just brought people up just random fans to talk to for a few minutes. Yeah. And they were, they were a little surprised at first, they, you know, double taking into the camera, like, Oh crap. I'm talking to, hi, how, you know, so it's, right. a, it's a really, it's an interesting landscape. And I, and I hope some of that sticks around after. Yeah. I think it's, it's something that a lot of people exercise that we didn't know we, we could or did or took the time to, and a lot of people learned a lot of other things, you know. Mm. I mean, there's there's been some benefits to the to the quarantine as well. Like like this, the kids' books all behind me right now is is part of that. I mean, I I started doing this thing called Corey Stories. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. How yeah you came to do that? So I just um, it's been an idea that I've been thinking about. Like uh, like I was like, oh, I should name my next album. You know, my next uh album or special or whatever I do, whichever one comes first, Corey stories. Mm. That's what I was thinking. And then I was like, I should do a show, like a, a kid's show. You know what I mean? Like I should do that. And I've been thinking about it for a while, but I've been busy. Like I haven't had three days, consecutive days, like not performing or something like that. It just hasn't mm. happened on four or five days, just enough. And I spend time with my family too. So this hasn't been enough where I could just be like, how do I do this? How do I make this happen? So mm. when this all hit, I was like, you know what? Like, I need to do this kid show that I want to do. Corey stories. The parents are in the house. The parents are stuck in. 
they're with their kids all day. They're homeschooling them. They're, like people are getting frustrated. Like people in general, like spouses are getting frustrated. The kids are getting frustrated with the parents. The parents frustrated with the kids because mm-hmm. everybody's around each other too much. You know, like the sweetest people in the world need a little break. They need a little alone time. <laughs> right. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me create something that gives the parents a little alone time and. And one of the things that they're probably obligated to do every night or which they should be probably doing is reading the kids a book mm-hmm. or having some fun with them at the end of the night. You know, when everything is winding down, you still got to keep it going. Well, when you're winding down, at least on the East Coast, around 730, I started this thing called Corey Stories where you come in and I have fun with the kids for a little bit. I, I always wear college. I always wear a different sweatshirt because I've performed at so many colleges. Mm-hmm. So when it comes on, I'll tell them about the college that I perform, the sweatshirt I'm wearing. And then, um, then we'll go into, you know, we'll do the sweatshirt thing. Then we'll go into, uh, I tell the kids a secret, you know, it's always just some sort of life advice. You know what I mean? Something, sometimes silly, sometimes really, really pertinent, you know, like things that my grandfather said to me and just all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you can't, you can't catch it. You can't catch a fish if your pole's not in the water. You know, if your line's not in the water, you can't catch (laughs) it. Right. Which is just funny. And then I break down the story and tell them the story of how, like, you know, I was always slow to take the fish off the hook and, and, and put the and, and put the worm on the hook. The longer you take doing that, the less fish you're going to catch. Everybody's catching fish around you while you're squirming about the worm or the fish. So mm-hmm. you can't catch them if it's out the water. So whatever. So funny little anecdotes and things like that. I tell the kids they enjoy. And then I go from there and I, and I, I, I'll, uh, I ask them questions. I, I bring them into Zoom and I ask them some pertinent questions, you know, mm-hmm. ask them money questions. I ask them safety <laughs> questions. You know, things like that, that they need to know, you know, um, you know, what do you do if you get lost? You know what I mean? Like if you're walking around with your parents, you're in a, a big group of people, who, what do you actually do if you lose them for a second? What do you do? And it's funny. I have a kid live on Zoom or two kids or whatever, and they're trying to answer like, oh, I would, um, I'm, I'm, you know, and, they, <laughs> stuff yeah. that they would do. and sometimes they answer awesome. Sometimes they know right away, like, oh, this is what I would do. This is exactly what I would do, you know, and they, they say the right stuff. It's so cool. Because the other kids learn that way. And it seems like they're learning in a fun way. Are are you getting traction? I'm sorry, go. No, 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 go ahead. Are you getting traction with the show? Are you finding you're getting a a, a big viewership? What's your viewership usually? It's cool. Like, it it fluctuates. You know what I mean? So a lot of people watch later because the time. So 7.30, there's a consistent 25, 30, sometimes 50 people that are in there live all the time and then after the viewership it, it still goes and shares and goes like that that's when mm-hmm. it goes up you know so you know, all the videos got you know i don't know four five hundred views mm-hmm. or something like that but you know i do it every night i do it monday through friday and then i took it off of facebook as well and moved it over to instagram so now that way when when life picks back up and i can't be on facebook live every night because i won't be home like that i won't be able to do this at that time mm-hmm. um i'll always be adding them to youtube so it'll be there so i'm building that youtube channel as well you know Corey stories mm-hmm. on youtube and so you can go there right now i mean i've already got this 28 episodes there already so is this know, the, did you have this format planned out before the uh, the pandemic hit this is what you planned to do already and and you finally had time to do it I found my way to do it as I was doing it. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I found my way through it. I was doing it through trial and error and just figuring it out, you know? And and I kept being like, this is what I want to do. And then I would just do it. I would just learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. I "I want to do it like this. All right. I got to buy a green screen. Cool. I'll buy a green screen. I'll buy the lights. I'll buy the whole setup. All right. This is what I got to do. Started with a ring light. And then I was like, I need to be lit. Then I got the the legit lights, you know, I got the whole studio set up, you know, I was like, all right, this is how it'll be, you know? And I bring my son and he does the show with me, you know? So, Cause after we ask the questions, we go into a book. I read the kids a book. I read them like a bedtime story. Mm-hmm. You know, now we have it set up where like when the story comes on, it plays on the board behind us. So like we step out the way and the, 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 the book, the book, all the illustrations are right there. Cause it took me a while. I used to hold the book and I'd be like, now boys and girls. And I'd be trying to like show them the book and I'd be like reading it and I'd be showing it like a teacher with the kids <laughs> and I'd be doing this. So I did that for a, for a while for the first 10 or 15 or so. And then I, no, I was like, I don't want to do it like that. So now I have the book playing behind me and I do it. So we do the book. Then when we get done with the book, I do like, and there's all songs I'm doing in between. Like there's all these little songs and the kids are like singing along. I got like mm-hmm. 50 plus videos of kids sending me them, singing <laughs> the songs and dancing and just enjoying the show, you know? Well, that's gotta be gratifying to see that. Oh, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, 
then it goes from there and then and then you know then i bring in a comic i usually bring in a comic or somebody else who's good with kids i bring them into the show and then we do our you know i do jokes i make up jokes every night you know and then mm -hmm. i'll bring a person on and let them do two or three jokes you know a comic bring them they do they do their jokes <laughs> they have fun they go crazy with the kids and then boom out and then we end the show so it's it's cool it's like boom 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 goes right through and you're planning on keeping this going, do you think, once uh, once the pandemic is over and things are kind of back? Yeah, to I think I, I mean, the show, the show is so cool that I like I. I mean, I don't know, I, I you know, you know, you like, oh, I should get picked up. I don't know. But I mean, the show is cool. The format of the show is so cool. And then the interaction with the kids and the fun is fun. It's a fun mm -hmm. show. Like the kids have fun with it. So I don't know. I mean wait 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 yes let me answer your question yes i can <laughs> continue to do it uh but i would imagine it will get picked up somehow or i will just you know there's like there's already like a couple of publishing companies that hit me up and they send me books and they're like hey man we love you know love what you're doing so oh that's great keep the books coming so it's cool man you know so so i think it's gonna be it could really take take flight and be something really cool you need to write your own kids books like Billy don't touch your face. Listen, this has been a this has also been a thought where it's like I should just write write some of my own stuff and just read them and do it my way and and want it's it's such a you don't think you're going to do some stuff like this until you just do it. That's what this thing has caused you to kind of see as well. Like this is an unpopular op opinion that I'm about to say but it's <laughs> but I'm telling you why I'm going to say it. I'm almost stressed when this shit starts to end, when the pandemic starts ending. Uh -huh. I'm stressed a little bit because it's like, I, there's some things that I should have been doing that I haven't. Like, I should have been getting in shape better at the same time, right? You know what I yes. mean? I so much peanut butter. Right. Over here. <laughs> so much. I should have been taking care of myself better. And so, if you've, if you've, if you've been in this for four weeks or five weeks or whatever we've been in it, that's five weeks. You can be, you can transform yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, as I see us getting out of it and we're potentially getting back to regular life, it's like, Oh man, I got to be a fatty. And I didn't take care <laughs> of myself. I, was supposed to. I need a couple more weeks. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the feeling you get when the summer's coming. It's like the excited right. summer. But if you're out of shape, you're like, fuck, I need just another, just give me like another, another two weeks and I can really do this. You know, I can flatten this belly out. Well, it, it so, has been basically a season and that's been enough time to establish a new normal yeah. that now getting back to everything you've been doing for years before that's going to feel a, a little weird. Yeah, for sure. I haven't, I haven't respected my calendar in, <laughs> wow. And, and I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not even being funny or anything. I haven't really looked at and respected my calendar it, it, like at all. And, and, mm -hmm. and I'm a, I'm, that's what I live by is that calendar. Like where I got shows at, where am I at? What, what's the date? What's the time? What, where, boom, boom, boom. Like I live by that calendar. I never even went back in and took dates down that I had for shows. I, I meant to go back in and just write Corona next to all of them. Everything that got canceled. I never went in and wrote Corona uh -huh. next to all of them. So I can't imagine people showing up at the place like, where were you? You know? So, <laughs> I mean, I think it was just gotta know, but. Well, we've got a surprise for you. All of us have been playing a big joke on just you, and <laughs> life has been going on for normal, and you've missed all those dates. Well, that, that definitely sucks because <laughs> uh, I do miss those dates. <laughs> so how can people help you out right now if, if uh, you don't have your your dates on the books anymore? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the, it's a lot of work and a big part of your income you've lost and will continue to, to lose in the coming months. How can people best support you and your work? Uh, if they have kids, go to YouTube and subscribe, find my face on there and subscribe to Corey stories. That's cool. That's, that'll be, that'll be more support. Take that, pass it on, <laughs> give it to people. Let them know what's up. That'll be that'll be awesome support. And when we get back to having live comedy, or if I'm posting about doing shows, just ch come check them out. That's it.
what where they can they find you on social media for this? Social media, thing? you can find me on Instagram at, at Corey Rods, C O R E Y R O D S, and on Twitter at Corey Rodriguez, Corey with an E, Rodriguez with an S, and then uh, just CoreyRodriguez.com. And that's when you'll see, you'll, you'll be able to find everything there Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, CoreyRodriguez.com. And if you're listening the day that this is released, uh, you can check out Nowhere Comedy Club for the best of Boston. You're on that show. It, it's uh, who's it? It's you, Kelly McFarlane, Dan Crone, uh, and Laura Severse. Right. That's which is a, a great lineup. Yeah, it'll be fun. In Definitely. any city, uh, much less just the best of Boston. So check that out as well. Thanks for, for doing this. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, you guys, make sure you tune in to Corey Stories. Get your kids and come tune in. This will be fun. 7.30 every night on Facebook Live. And then besides that, it's always available on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And on Instagram as well? Not on Instagram yet. I, I need to make okay. a promo video for Instagram to bring people over to watch it on YouTube. But it's not on Instagram because it's shorter. So, All right. Well, th- thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you.